Hello and welcome to this Factoria investigation video where I will discuss the uh, boiler steam engine uh, power production. I will, will touch upon the calculations and how to optimize your setup with uh, an optimal number of boilers for your engine setup and uh, and we'll try to take this quite far as to like 25 steam engines and that's that's basically the maximum you can have in one row or in one line uh, because that's how much water we can fit in the pipes uh, but we'll start up here with the basics and then but first let's go through the math because that's kind of important for what we are doing here so let me jump to the spreadsheet. So here we have some calculations and uh, there are more to do actually because we have another factor that we can call uh, pressure or transfer rate perhaps. But with the basics these are basically the numbers or the, uh, the, the mechanics that you need to know. Since we are starting with the offshore pump to pump up water, you should know that it can manage 60 water per second. 60 units of water, of course. Uh, this is what we will heat up and this is what we will consume to produce power. And then we have the small pump. Let's not touch upon that yet. Uh, let's instead talk about the steam engine. Every steam engine will consume six units of fluid per second. This means that with the two engines we'll get a maximum of 12 and so on until we reach 10 steam engines that means 60 fluid per second that's how much the pump can produce so that up to 10 steam engines one pump is enough. Then when you go beyond that then well of course for every 10 engines you will need another pump. And then it's the part with the boilers. Uh, this is calculated with this formula. So since we can consume 6 units of water per second we need to heat it up uh, 85 degrees. The 85 comes from uh, the 15 degrees that we have in the water when we pump it up and we want to reach 100 degrees to reach the maximum uh, capacity or the maximum power con production. So 6 times 85 and 390 is the, uh, the effect in the boiler. So this will give us that one boiler, one steam engine will require 1.3 boilers or 1.31 but um, when we do the, it like this in a spreadsheet we can actually calculate exactly the number and this will give us a few important numbers to remember that for 10 steam engines we have one pump and we will need slightly above 13 boilers. They are quite cheap so I usually go for 14 but 13 is quite close and you will run at like 99% efficiency or something like that. Another sweet spot is 13 engines. You will need two pumps but you should be fine with exactly 17 boilers. This is kind of a sweet spot to have no uh, no waste of energy or uh, waste of material. When we reach 20 engines, two pumps a maximum, then you should have 27 or maybe 26 boilers. And uh, then we reach the maximum out here, down here, 25. And this is a maximum in this video because we will have the water flow of 150 units of water per second and this is how much we can fit in one pipe uh, over a distance of like four pipes or so. Let's now not dig deeper into this. Uh, let's just remember that 25 is kind of a 
the maximum you will get with one pipe uh, due to that you, the pressure or the uh, the transfer rate will be uh, will have some losses when you have enough pipes all right also that 30 fluid per second in this small pump um, well that is also a limitation so but we, i won't cover that much in this video let's just go back to building all right okay so after that quite heavy <laughs> that math intense uh, spreadsheet let's just verify a few things here and also you can see these radars they are very good for testing since they will constantly use up uh, what is it 300 kilowatts at all times so they are very stable they don't go up and down so for benchmarking they are very useful so the most basic setup one steam engine you could go with one boiler but you wouldn't reach our number that we needed that was slightly higher you remember that one steam engine requires two and or one 1 1.3 per per engine so to make it run at maximum place two or you will have some i don't know we will drop down now when, when the water you see the temperature is going down directly and we will lose power so instead of 510 we are quickly dropping off so it's quite important to really match let's see now it's stabilizing so perhaps 60% of efficiency, not good. Like that's better. All right, uh, now let's remove these. We don't need them anymore. And it will drop down because we don't need as much power anymore, but we had 510, which is the maximum for the steam engine. All right, let's move on to this setup. Here we have one, two, three, four, ten. 10. Uh, this is the one pump optimal setup and, and that also means that we have 14 boilers so now let's get to let's see we are not yeah we haven't connected this yet uh, so this network will only power these inserters to make sure that we have a constant flow and we have lots of materials and so on these ones they will on, only and only 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 uh, Let's see, like that. Power these radars and we probably need to connect them a slightly... Well, something like that. All right, what do we have? We have 10 steam engines. They are running at a total of 5.1 megawatts. That's 510 each. And if you take a look at the numbers, down here we are pumping up 15 degrees water they are slowly building up to reach 99 per 0.25 degrees on our 13th and in our 14th we will reach 100 degrees and as you can see here we have 99.92 degrees in the engines i guess we have some losses when we re leave this one uh, those losses are well, I, I can't really explain them because they're not really that consistent, I think. Up here we have 100 degrees and we have slightly... Well, now we don't... If we connect this again. I think we had 100 degrees up here when these are running at the maximum. And then we have... Yeah, we didn't have 100, 100 degrees, but almost... Now we have 100 degrees everywhere. So we have some losses down here that will cause this to lose some. I don't know if, if it's a distance from this part to here. I need to investigate that fully. But in any way, this is the uh, kind of optimum setup. Uh, it's very commonly used and you probably know about it already. But let's say we want more. More steam engines. We want another line. Well, I like to design these. This is a. I used to do this for actually some time. Uh, let's see, we can place this one. Underground pipes are very useful because you can uh, easily run with your character. You can have underground belts, but to run with your dude, 
it's quite useful to it's very convenient to do this because it can run over everywhere and now let's quickly place our 14 of those and 14 of those and something like that so then you can expand this, you can expand this again like this and then you will have another line down here and so on. So it looks quite cool, uh, but actually there's a better way to do it, at least in my opinion. So we remove all these and we remove this one. Why waste resources on belts if we don't have to? You can do it like this. That's right, we can actually use the boilers as an inventory and then simply move them over. If we just redo some of them. And you can actually stack these for quite a while, I don't know the maximum. Of course at some point you will, uh, <coughs> you will get a loss up here because you, they will be output every now and then. Uh, but at least a few rows of these, it's no problem. And from here we can simply... How many steam engines do I have? I need more. Like this. So 10 more would look something like this. And some power... I want to connect it to this part. You can actually shift left click like that. Alright, are they connected? Yeah, perfect. So two rows and now we are meeting the power requirements. Hmm, I thought we should have more. Let's place a few more. I rem removed some. See, we are picking up 7.1 megawatts. Why don't we have more? Oh, here. They are not connected. We have... Now where they are connected. These ones were in this. It's in an own network. So now we have 20 and we're running at 10.2 megawatts, which is 20 by times 510. So this is good. This is a good setup. You can stack it. This is perhaps the best one. Uh, but let's take it one step further and just go through as a final part the 25 setup. Uh, there are different ways to do this. Let me just save this and change world to another one. Yeah. So here I'm playing with this small pump. This is a quite well tested uh, setup as well. It's there, There's another contraption that looks something like... Uh, like this and then you have the output and then you have uh, let's see four of these like that and then the pipes are going like that and then you do this, this all over again so that's one type of setup that you can do uh, and this is the the purpose of these pumps is to keep the the flow and uh, so we don't get losses over a distance um, there's something like four, four, um, a four pipe distance with a maximum of transfer rate of 150, then you will drop below. So if we're running more than four pipes, then we will lose flow rate and that will lower the total capacity. So it can look something like this uh, when you have all <laughs> the entire line, but it's very expensive. I mean, one pump uh, is one electric engine unit. You need oil and so on, or lubricant. Uh, so actually, I don't prefer to do this. Uh, it's fun for testing, but it's not really that useful. Instead, let's go back and I'll show you the optimal setup that I think is better. Yeah, here. So we have 25 engines over here, they are not running, we have no power, and let's connect some power actually 
like that and remove some of these so we can get some more power. Good, satisfaction green. That means that we have power over here to benchmark this part. And here you can see the three pipes that are required for 25 engines. Uh, we have one output pipe. Let's connect everything. Instead of using all those pumps or, and, and so on, let's use this method and actually have a few. So we need quite a few. You need a f slightly more boilers by doing this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven is enough. I like that. So seven of the boilers is enough for five engines. And five times five is of course 25. But we'll have a problem here if I just collect it like this. And now we can start with this. Like that. This is very useful and we have we have enough here. It can take some time to fill up in the beginning, but it's no problem. And now let's hook everything up. Like that, and we can also do it over here. Oh, almost there. Just need a few more to maximize things. Yep, like that. So now we are in the yellow and everything is fine. Or so we thought, because we are not running at full performance. As you can see over here, we have roughly 88, it's stabilizing now, 88 degrees and we're running on low performance. Performance is due to not having enough water. They're all the same. So why is this? Well. It's going the wrong way, it seems. So we're getting... It's probably going in the wrong direction, so they are mixing up. Uh, we're not reaching 100 degrees on everyone. The solution is the small pump. This pump is a one-way flow control. It will output 30 units of water per second. And 5 times 30 is 150. That's the maximum for... 25, 25 engines and they will guarantee that the water flow is only in one direction. And if we take a look at the temperature, as you can see here, it's 100 degrees. They all seem to run at maximum performance as well. I think it was one. No, they really look perfect. So that means we should have 25 times 510, that gives us 12.75 megawatts of power. Let's take a look here. 12 megawatts, we are not running. Oh, we're only 24, we need one more. Of course we need one more. Like that. Now we're at 25, so let's see if it stabilizes very shortly. 12.7 uh, megawatts. So this is basically the maximum. Now it says 13 and it will switch between, I guess it's a rounding thing. But we're basically running this at almost maximum capacity. Sometimes I can see this, we're losing performance in this one. Uh, unknown why, I think it's because we have some pressure problem. I don't think this will solve the problem either. But we're running at close to 100%. Now it looks slightly better. So perhaps we had some losses when we had that underground pipe. Another way of doing this is of course that you can split things up. If I remove quite a few of these, we can place them in parallel. Let's see, then I need to rebuild this quickly. Don't worry, I know exactly what I'm doing. Like that, and the same thing up here. 
we can tidy things up. Actually, we can place these slightly closer. That means that we can connect these ones. Okay, like that. So now it, we should run at the same performance, uh, 12.7 megawatts, the maximum for one pipe. But now since we're doing this, we could as well just do this setup and repeat that over and over again. So this is very fun. I, I think it's very enjoyable to benchmark these things, but this is as far as we can go, I think. Uh, the next part to investigate fully is the flow of water, uh, the need of the pumps. And also in the next one, I really want to cover the use of these storage tanks for fluids. They are actually better to store energy than the substation. No, not the substation. <laughs> um, the accumulator, here it is. Uh, at least so they say. I want to explore it and test it. So I'll be back with another video probably on this subject. Let me hear what you think in the video co comments. Uh, what you think of these, this tutorial, this video and this type of videos. And if you have any questions, of course, just drop them. I'll try my best to answer them. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.